Five words that people use to describe you, Manuela. Let's ask them. So the most common ones are passionate, loyal, intense independent, and a go-getter. But I'm also so strong, and I think I grew up too fast. I have been through everything, and I saw a video that really resonated with me. The people in your age group who did not experience life-altering trauma had an advantage over you. Your brain was focused on surviving, while they were free to develop and grow. You might feel like you're behind, but it's because you were doing your best to survive. The reason I want to share my story now is because May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And if you know me, if you follow me, you know I'm a big mental health advocate. I share my journey with therapy and I encourage others to seek therapy and find ways to better your mental health. And... I'm also pissed off. The Supreme Court is trying to overturn Roe v. Wade, and this is something that is going to be a very controversial conversation, but someone's got to speak up, and so I'm going to speak up today. I went through so much before the age of 13, and my grandpa dying at an early age really was the start of my heartbreak and then shit just kept happening <laughs> so my grandpa died of alcoholism i was constantly in fire flight mode my family was always moving and i didn't have a lot of stability we always were struggling financially until my very late adulthood in my 20s. I went through bullying. I went through sexual assault by somebody my parents trusted and knew and I knew my whole life. I didn't realize that I had also been sexually assaulted in seventh grade by somebody teabagging me and I didn't process that as an assault until therapy in my mid-20s when I went through because of my miscarriage turned abortion and this is heavy but my story is meant to be shared I think if anybody has the willpower if anybody has the bravery and if anybody has the intentions to change to inspire I'm gonna do it and it was with somebody that I dated once we reconnected it was a one-time thing and I'm having a difficult time with what's going on with Roe vs. Wade right now, being a Christian and seeing all these people I look up to, absolutely loving that they ban safe abortions. And let me really be clear on this. There's a big difference in 
supporting women's reproductive health and being pro-abortion. I don't think, if you know me, my intention is to ever just, yes, abortion, you know, no. I think life is not black and white. It is very gray and I fall under that category because I never ever thought I would go through this and five years ago if you were to ask me I would also would be jumping at this possible new you know thing that the Supreme Court is doing but because I went through what I went through I changed my mind and not once did I ever feel judged by God. So I'm not gonna let these girls that I don't know but I admire make me feel shitty about my situation. To the ones who are just so happy about, you know, our state possibly banning safe abortion, what do you do in that situation when the doctor tells you that you probably won't see your baby, you know, to term. So abortions are going to happen no matter what. And you know what, if you are of high class, have access to everything, this probably doesn't concern you. And you're probably gonna get all the tools that you need. I'm speaking about this because this affects low-income people and people of color and I cannot emphasize enough how important it is for us to speak up and for our state to let women do what they got to do. I'm Christian and this is a very taboo thing for me to talk about and I imagine I'm going to get some backlash, but like I am so confident. I am so happy. I am, like I said, never felt judged by God through any of this. And so I'm not going to let you feel that way either. My dad has instilled, you can do anything, hope in me. I also have installed my ambition and my hard work ethic through my mom because she is my hero <laughs> and she really just like paved the way for being a strong resilient woman and her support my whole family support when I was going through my pregnancy was overwhelming. I was so scared to tell them, but not one person judged me. They were there for me. They, you know, we're human. We make mistakes. And I think my hope of inspiring and empowering women, it got lost in translation with me seeming like I want to show how good my life is. I want to show off my accomplishments. And I wish I would have, you know, worded things a little bit differently, more humble, because, you know, I got a glimpse of like, just someone else who was just kind of being braggy and showy. And I was like, ooh, that's cringe. And like, I do that sometimes. I'm making myself cringe. And so the reason for this video is because I really want to empower and I want to inspire, but I also have felt misunderstood my whole life by people. And I don't know if it's because I grew up in another country for seven years and so my mannerisms are different, my affection is different, my just foundation of learning and tools is different, or I, don't know if it's because I was bullied in middle school that I developed people pleasing ability so I have done a lot of people pleasing in my life and I've just now found my voice I'm learning to be authentic to not 
sugarcoat things, to not, you know, have this facade of a great happy life because it's very unrealistic. And I show my bad days, you know? I definitely keep things private also, but I'm finding joy and sharing because I heal by connecting with others and by watching others heal through me, through God, through inspiration. You know what? This isn't some sappy story. This is a victory story. And I don't want sympathy. I don't want attention. And I don't need validation. I just want you to listen and to be open-minded. And if you're watching this, I have probably connected you to a friend, to a boyfriend, to a fiance, to a job. My strength is connecting people and I have felt the pull of me being the connecting, the connector of people. I'm so in love with my friendships and my friendships now have really changed my life. I don't have a lot of best friends. I have a few and I don't talk to people every day, but I have found joy in that. I have found contentment. You know, the reason I'm doing this now is because I had a mental breakdown a few weekends ago and my friend who reached out to me at the beginning of the year to share my story came to mind during those times of, you know, emotional heartbreak that I did on myself. And the reason he came to mind is because God literally said, share your story. And here I am, not even shedding a tear. I don't know how that happened, <laughs> but I think it's because I talked about this in therapy. I shared my why with my therapist about doing this video. She obviously knows my whole story. And if I'm gonna get approval from anybody in the world, it's probably my therapist. <laughs> I'm really inspired by people who speak up and are vulnerable. I love people that are genuine. I really didn't think people would give a shit if I shared my story, but somebody who inspired me to really keep going is one of my oldest friends. And her reaction to me sharing the story was just what I needed. I've gotten told Someone has gone to church because of me. Someone has gone to therapy because of me. Somebody has said the words, you inspire me. I want to inspire. I want to cause a ripple effect. I want women to share their stories. This month is the perfect month to share this. And thank you for listening. I'm Anuela.